about time that we get into our um, you know predictions for when each of these rookie quarterbacks will make their start. We'll go Kenny Pickett with the Steelers. Um, so I we I've been saying this. Um, I think we've been on the same page with this. He should start Week One. Um, and and we're going to predict that. I think the Steelers are going to make the right decision. And I, I do think that even if there is a, a fair and square quarterback battle, I think he is probably the best quarterback in the room. Now, it's going to be close between him and Mitch. I don't think Mason Rudolph's even an option. Um, I think he will end up being kind of close between him and Mitch Trubisky. They're both very similar quarterbacks. I, I, think, even, so. I think I said at one point that uh, Kenny Pick is Mitch Trubisky's cousin. Right there, They play very similar styles of football. Yeah, you did say that. I do think Kenny's got a little bit more of an it factor. Right, I think he's got a little bit more of a... First of all, I think he's more mobile. Reminds me a little bit of Daniel Jones. Is he super mobile? No, but straight line speed, can he get away from you? Absolutely. Yeah. And I do think with the production that he showed his senior year at Pitt, like he he has a little more of an it factor, right? Even when Trubisky was, quote-unquote, a standout at, at uh, North Carolina, he never had that one season where he – like set himself apart statistically, so then Kenny just, does like, have that it factor. Worlds better than a lot of his competition. I mean, Kenny Pickett did go on a tear there in his senior season. It was nuts. Right, right. And so that's what I'm saying. So I think he has got that little more of an it factor. So I think he'll start Week One at Cincinnati for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Kenny Pickett. And I think that's what you have to do too. I agree. If he's 25 starting a first his first game, like next season, I just don't think you gain a whole lot from that. No. We'll, we'll go in the order that they were drafted. So we'll go Desmond Ritter next. He was the second quarterback off the board to Atlanta. Now, I will say, so we'll start off. He's going to start week eight against Carolina. Now, here, here's kind of why. right? So I don't think he starts early because they have the Saints who, they won't be a great football team, but they will have a good defense. Cam Jordan, Marshawn Lattimore, they just got a defensive head coach, Marcus Allen. Or not Marcus Allen. I forget. It's, it, it's something similar to that. Sorry. But so Saints, then, and then they get the Rams. You go to L.A. of the Rams week two. And then you go to Seattle, who I don't think Seattle's a good football team either. But again, Pete Carroll, defensive head coach. They've made some improvements on the defensive side of the football, Seattle. And then you go to Cleveland, or no, you get Cleveland at home. Then you go to Tampa Bay, and then San Fran at home, to Cincinnati. And then finally, you get kind of an easy game here. So first of all, I think that whole, that that first seven weeks, that's going to be a rough stretch. I don't think Mariota's going to look good. I think there's a very real possibility the Falcons go 0-7 in the first seven. Right, the pressure's going to be mounting. They're going to want to see Desmond Ritter, right? And you have to check out what you have. And so then you get Carolina at home in Week Eight. It's not a prime time game. It's a one o'clock game. Not a whole lot of pressure at home against Carolina. Start him there. He'll have a bit of a rough game Week Nine against LA, but then he gets Carolina again in Week Ten. Then Chicago, then Washington. So that's the easiest stretch of the schedule right there. Those are the most winnable football games in there, right? They should beat Chicago if they if if Ritter plays well. And, and you have a chance, you at least have a chance to beat Carolina both times. The I thing, think that's the easiest spot of the schedule because then it gets into Pittsburgh, New Orleans again, Baltimore, no, Arizona, no, 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 Tampa. No, 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 no. Right? I don't he want him in there. He, he can't start there. But you, he does get Carolina twice. The one thing that I worry about in that little stretch is Washington because I feel like Washington is the team that, that can beat him up a little bit. They have an insane front four. That pass rush is going to be crazy. But I think that's one of the games he's not going to have to worry about winning a shootout because I don't think Washington's offense is going to put up that many points. Now, watch your back with Chase Young, though. Right, that's going to be agree. the thing. As a rookie quarterback coming from Cincinnati, look, great, man. I hope you can play. I really hope he can play. I like him a lot. But you have Chase Young coming off that, aid, uh, that edge for Washington. That's one of the games that I would watch out if he does start Week 8 against Carolina. Right, because I do think I'm, – and I'm not saying he – takes over week eight and finishes the season i'm thinking he goes week eight through maybe week 11 and then honestly i I hate to predict an injury i wouldn't be surprised though if he gets hurt or banged up a little bit or confidence dinged against washington and then you're probably not going to want to run him out there against pittsburgh in week 13 the week after so i think he could just have a little stretch of like four games where he starts right give him a little experience see see what you have yeah just a little trial run a little test run see what happens and then after pittsburgh even if he does start for the pittsburgh game then another then you get a buy hey and if he shows out evaluate if he shows out and he's looking really good why not roll him out there against pittsburgh i mean he probably Right, you know. right, and like I said, there's a there's a bye week right after Pittsburgh. Then from there, you can regroup, right? I think that's probably the best spot to put him in, um, and I think there is going to be mounting pressure for him to play. Yeah. Now, granted, everyone in in Atlanta kind of knows it's a little bit of a rebuild, um, but those people want want to win, right? They, they have to put a winning product on the field, and I think it's going to be a rough stretch for Mario to early. Me, it's and Atlanta; they want to win. Yeah. Um, okay, let's go with Malik Willis. 
I think he starts week 18 at Jacksonville. I think it's going to be his only start of the year. Because I do think that the Titans are going to be in this thing until late, right? So they, they start with New York, the Giants. That's a win. Um, and then they have a little bit of a rough stretch towards Buffalo, Vegas, Indy. That's going to be rough. But then you get the Commanders, Indy at home, and then the Texans. Um, again, another rough stretch. You get the Chiefs, Broncos, Packers, Bengals. But then you get the Eagles, Jags, Texans, Cowboys, and then the Jags to finish it off, yep. right? I think they're going to be in it until late. I think they probably lose to the Cowboys on Thursday Night Football Week 17 to kind of put them out of the playoffs because I don't think they're a playoff team right now. I think when you lose A.J. Brown, you're you're too Tannehill and Derrick Henry dependent. So I think they're going to be in it up until Week 16 or 17. They're going to be mathematically eliminated in, say, Week 17 against Dallas. And then you have at Jacksonville Week 18, you're already out of the playoffs. Why not let Malik get a start? Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or even if you're even if you're optimistic about this team, they have already clinched the playoffs by week 18. I think either way, week 18 is not a meaningful football game. I think they've either clinched or they're they've been mathematically eliminated. It's yep. at Jacksonville, pretty low pressure, right? It's probably going to be like a one o'clock game, low pressure. I mean, it's Jacksonville. They're going to be eliminated too. It's going to be a very not mellow game. It's the NFL still, but. The temperature in the room is going to be brought gonna be, down a little bit. It's not going to be battling it out for the last spot of a, a playoff. Right. The temperature in the room is going to be down a little bit. It's a great spot to insert a rookie. Let him get that one under his belt, and then it's it that experience is fresh heading into the offseason. He can work his way through the offseason. He knows what he needs to improve at least a little bit. Like He gets a, right. a temperature gauge of himself and knows what he has to do. Right. I think, I think it makes a lot of sense for him to only start because he's a very raw prospect. I don't think he's got a guy that's going to come in and start six, seven, eight games no. and be a difference maker. I think he's way too raw if he starts. I think he's more close to like Trey Lance. Maybe starts one or two games. Yep. Um, kind of see what you got a little bit. Let him progress um, a little bit more, a little bit slower than some of the other quarterbacks. I agree. All right, and finally, Matt Corral, I think, will be the last rookie quarterback to get a start. And I think that will come in uh, week 14 at Seattle. So, first of all, Seattle's not a very good football team. Now, granted, they have a good defense, but... Not a very good football team, so just that game alone, very winnable football game. He won't probably start earlier, right, because Sam Ronald's fine. Um, he's okay. Plus, there's no real good spot in the in the schedule for him to start. What's so, their strength of schedule? I'm not 100% sure what the strength of schedule is, but I can tell you right here. So they, they open up with Cleveland, and then they go to the Giants. So you're probably 1-1, one one, right? You lose to the Saints, 1-2. and two. Then you have the Cardinals, the Niners, the Rams, Oof. and the Buccaneers. So you're not going to insert him there. No. Now, here's an interesting spot. Maybe week eight because it goes Falcons, Bengals, Falcons. It's an idea, but I don't think it'll happen. I think the Bengals in there kind of throws it off a little bit. Right. And then it's the Ravens, Broncos, bye. Coming out of the bye, then you have Seattle. And then who's after Seattle? Pittsburgh. So that's not great. But then you get the Lions the week after. Okay. And then you go to Tampa, not ideal, but then you get the Saints week 18. By then you're playing, it's not meaningful okay, football there's, anyway. There's not really a great time to put him in. But I, I would say Seattle would probably. Buy. Yeah, Seattle post by because you, you got a little more rest. You can game plan him a little bit more because you have an extra week. Also, here's my thing. I like Sam Donald, but let's not be surprised if he goes in this stretch right here, right, where it's L.A., Tampa, Atlanta, Cincinnati, Atlanta, Baltimore, Denver. So seven games leading up to the bye. Even with two Atlanta games in there, would you be surprised if Darnold goes 0-7 and looks horrific? No. Then you get to a bye. People are going to be begging for you to put make some sort of switch at quarterback. 0-7, Darnold looks terrible. You finally have a bye. You have time to regroup. You open up with a team that Seattle by week... 14, they're probably like 3-9, three and 3-10, three and three and right? They're in Something shambles. like that. Their defense, they can't generate a pass rush. They can't get anything going. Right, they're probably not a good football team by then. You don't have to win a shootout. It's Drew Locke on the other side. Yeah. I think that's a pretty good spot for Matt Corral to go into. Yeah, it's a good spot. It's a 425 game. It's nothing prime time. I think it's a good spot for him to go into. Mm-hmm. Well, at least the best spot. I, we'll see. We'll see. Um, so those are our predictions of when these uh, these rookie quarterbacks. So Pickett in the first round of Pittsburgh, Desmond Ritter in the second to Atlanta, Malik Willis in the third um, to the Titans, and then Matt Corral finally to the Panthers. Um, we're predicting, you know, yeah. predicted all of them to make their first starts in the NFL. We got 